Hello and welcome to Ignite. I hope you've had a really good week. Now tonight we are starting Zoom at 7 um, and till 8 o'clock rather than at half past 7 as we used to. So just a reminder for that and I'll remind you again at the end. And we're going to start Ignite as we always start Ignite with a prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, we thank you so much for today. We thank you for the week that you've given us. And Lord, we just pray as we hear all that goes on this week on the Zoom, Lord, that uh, you will speak to our hearts and uh, yeah, we will know you better. So thank you, Lord, for this opportunity of spending time together. Amen. So today we are going to have a leader versus leader challenge. We have Chantelle doing a talk um, and Becky choosing the music. So, and now, we're going to have Becky giving us a song choice. Hi guys, uh, so this week my song suggestion to you is a song called Into the Sea, or I don't know if it's also called It's Gonna Be Okay, um, and it's sung by Tasha Layton or something like that. Um, and the reason I'm suggesting this song is because uh, the first time I heard it was probably, oh, I don't know, like last year at some point. Um, and at the time, I'd been praying about a situation and I just was like really angry at God and was like, oh, like, are you even listening, God? Like, you're a bit of an idiot, basically, is what I was kind of praying and thinking. Like, I was really annoyed at God. Um, um, and I was praying mainly about a situation that my sister was in and she was having a really tough time. Um, and then I just randomly stuck on Spotify on this song just started playing and I'd, I'd not heard it before that point. Um, and, and it really like just spoke to me. Um, so like it, it starts off with my heart is breaking in a way I never thought it could. My mind is racing, racing with a question, are you still get good? Which is basically what I would, had been feeling praying to God. Um, and then a bit later on, there's uh, in the chorus, it says, um, though the mountain may be, mo may be moved into the sea, though the ground beneath might crumble and give way, I can hear my father singing over me. It's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. Um, so I had I listened to a song and I was like, oh, maybe God's trying to tell me it's going to be okay. So I'd sent this song as a link to my sister who was going through a really tough time and said, oh, I was just praying about you. And this song just, you know, came up. And uh, instantly she replied with like, Beck, I've been listening to this song on repeat every day for the last like month and a bit. Um, and she's and she's like, and the fact you just sent it to me when she was, like, I think she was having quite a tough, tough morning. She was like, just it says a lot. So there you go. That's my song suggestion for you to check out this week. We're now going to go to the leaders versus leaders challenge. Now, once you've watched this, when you see us on Zoom tonight, if you can decide who wins, and obviously the person who gets the most vote wins. So over to the challenge. <laughs> Hey everyone, so Charmaine and I are doing the Leaders vs Leaders challenge tonight and we have a load of recycling next to us and we will be using this to just create an object or thing that we can think of. So we're going to have five minutes on the timer to be able to do it. You ready Charmaine? I'm ready. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> Three, two, one, start. I literally looked at it and I was like, there's 10 seconds left. What? I managed to just do that. <laughs> there's mine there. It's my little boat. Oh, wow. Uh, okay. <laughs> and it's moored here. You see it's got um, oops, moored up. See if I do two bits here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. And it's on a bit of a river. Oh my gosh, okay. Um, <laughs> so mine looks like half of like an animal or something. Just like from the side. I don't even, I can't, I, I just don't even know. <laughs> I think honestly, that didn't go as well as I was expecting. I didn't really have a, like a clear thing in mind. Okay. I was definitely too focused on sticking that one on. <laughs> um, okay. Um, okay. What it's supposed to be? Just go with the animal, I guess. 
Uh, okay. <laughs> it's up to you guys to vote when we meet later in person. So yeah, see you then. Again, welcome back. Now we're going to have Chantelle do a talk on suffering. Over to you, Chantelle. This term, we're looking at topics and questions that you, the young people, have set us as leaders. And this week, I am answering the question, why does God let suffering happen? This is a question that um, I really came to think about properly after I had Jonathan. Shortly after he was born, he was really seriously ill in hospital and he was this small baby his kidneys didn't work that everything was building up in his body so that um, he wasn't um, able to get rid of fluid he was quite puffy um, he cried an awful lot he couldn't be fed what he needed so he cried and cried and cried in his in his cot and um and it was really heartbreaking it was really heartbreaking to see a baby suffer like this and uh, one day i was walking through bristol and I was just on the verge of asking God why, not what, why, why am I suffering, but why, why let this baby suffer in this way? And as this question was just kind of forming in my mind, I had this amazing image of Jesus on the cross with his arms outstretched in agony, dying for us on a cross and above him, I had a picture of God the Father with these tears streaming down his face and I heard this word, I know. And in that moment, the fact that God had come himself as Jesus to take our suffering and to die on the cross for us. He loved me so much that he was able to give his only son to do that for you and for me and that he knew the immense pain that is involved in suffering both because he felt it in jesus on the cross and because he felt it as god the father with these tears streaming down his face did the pain of that of that suffering and at that moment that answer to this question why does god let suffering happen was better than any other um, argument that anyone had ever talked to me about. And it really changed my relationship with, uh, with God going forward. It was really an amazing experience in my, um, in my walk with Jesus. And it's something that has really transformed my understanding of this question. Why does God let suffering happen? So I thought, having given you a bit of my story, actually it might be useful for you to have some of, the, of, the, of those arguments that I talked about later, some of the things that um, we as Christians believe about suffering that, that help us to un, sort of give a framework for what we, uh, what we believe in. So suffering was never part of God's original plan. In Genesis 1.31, we, we learn that God saw that his creation was very good. But suffering comes in in Genesis 3 with the fall, where, we, where sin first enters our world and we turn from God and his plans and we put ourselves first. This has effects for creation and our relationship with creation. The, crowd, the ground becomes cursed. It affects human relationships with each other. Um, Adam and Eve go on to have Cain and Abel. Uh, as you probably know, Abel killed, no, Cain kill, killed Abel even. Um, Cain killed Abel. And with sin comes the introduction of death. God tells Adam, to dust you came from and to dust you will return. The root of these issues remain today. We see suffering due to creation no longer being perfect on huge scales like droughts and floods and earthquakes and global pandemics. We see suffering in our human relationships with wars and conflicts, and we see sickness and the pain of death. Sin causes suffering. 
But I don't think the question of why God lets suffering happen is, it's not a question that the Bible is trying to answer because at its core, the Bible is a book about a relationship between God and people and suffering is seen alongside that relationship. In the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus said, my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow even till the point of death. Jesus enters our suffering, taking up our pain and bearing our suffering. God doesn't distance himself from suffering. In Jesus, God knows at an intense personal level what it is to suffer. Jesus also tells us that we too will have trouble in this world. So although suffering was not part of God's plan for his creation, time and again in the Bible, we see God using and transforming the experience of suffering to bring people back to him. We see it in the relationship between God and his people in the Old Testament, where suffering comes on people for a time to bring them back to the Lord. And the consequences of turning away from God are spelt out to them. For example, in the message that Jonah takes the people of Nineveh, we see him saying, unless you, unless you repent, this is going to happen. So does this mean that all suffering is sent from God to bring people back to him? No. Job was leading a good life and fearing God. And the devil comes to God and says, hmm, does Job fear God for nothing? And goes on to bring all sorts of sufferings onto Job. This happens in the first few chapters of of the book of Job, but most of the book is a, then about the response of Job's friends to his situation. If you want to know how not to respond to someone who is suffering, read what his friends say. The most helpful thing they do is sit with Job in his suffering and not say a word. God transforms our sufferings for his purposes. Joseph in the Old Testament was sold into slavery in Egypt by his brothers and after years in prison, he ended up running Egypt's response to a famine. When his brothers came to him and asked for grain and apologised, Joseph said to them, you intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who've been called according to his purpose. Because God not only uses our sufferings for his purposes, but he uses them to develop us as well. So James says, consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. In other words, it's at times of testing that our faith can deepen as we depend on God more. Peter describes our faith being refined and tested in a fire like gold. At our youth service, Naomi shared a beautiful poem by Corrie ten Boom, who suffered hugely in the Nazi concentration camp during World War II. Corrie ten Boom says our lives are like a tapestry. We only see the underside with all its tangle and mess of threads, but God sees the picture on the other side. In other words, Sometimes we just don't understand why suffering has happened and we might not fully understand God's plan in it, but that doesn't mean there isn't one. God uses and transforms our sufferings, but he also carries us through it. Jesus says, come to me all who labour and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. And Peter uses this fishing metaphor, cast all your cares upon Jesus because he cares for you. We have a God who through his Holy Spirit supplies all our needs and whose grace is sufficient in all our weakness. Last week, Nick talked about prayer and mentioned that the Psalms have lots of different prayers in them. If you're suffering and not sure how, to, how or what to pray, then have a look at them. Jesus used the words of Psalms 22 on the cross. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Finally, I started by saying that suffering was not God's original plan, but it's also not part of the final plan either. We carry on now because of the promise of what is to come. In Revelation 21, 1-5, John gets a vision of the new creation 
in which suffering is taken away. When we look at suffering in the world, this is a picture we can hold on to. Now the dwelling of God is with men and he will live with them. They will be his people and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There'll be no more death or mourning or crying or pain. The old order of things has passed away. Oh, hi. I hope you've enjoyed the uh, video tonight um, for Ignite and I've almost finished my gardening. So we are on at seven o'clock tonight on Zoom. Please join us and we look forward to seeing you then. Take care, bye. Oh wait, it's really focused. Oh, okay. <laughs> and today we oh God. Hello and welcome to Wait no you guess again. Hey? Go, go. <laughs> See all cats coming your way. I can. I can't see the tears in my eyes. <laughs> The lights go, man. You need to get this going. <laughs> <laughs> <It's> just... <laughs> Hello. <laughs> okay. <laughs>